folks there's still people that just don't get this they don't understand or they don't want to understand they don't want to accept the fact that if mammals can evolve into bipedal hominids so can reptiles what in the sam hill oh that's such a weird opener it poses a ridiculously obtuse question do i believe that reptiles could never evolve into humanoids like he says or am i gonna take that the way it's meant to be taken given that beautiful looking reptile man next to his head there that reptiles exist nowadays what exactly is that question supposed to be asking they want to keep ignoring the fact that evolution if it's legitimate if it's real would have to support the evolution of reptiles as well as mammals Granted, I'm no evolutionary biologist, but to my knowledge, I don't think there's anything in the laws and rules and organization of evolution that says reptiles can't do something. Pretty sure evolution just works the way it wants to work. The interesting thing about it is that most of the dinosaurs, supposed, that we have on file already walk on two legs. They already walk on two legs. Yeah, gonna need a big old fat citation on that quote there, buddy. So how big of a leap then is it for them to become a bipedal hominid? Not very, not very much. Not very much at all. Bipedalism is walking on two feet. Being a hominid is being a member of a, of a specific biological family. The great apes, if you will. You don't become a great ape by walking on two feet. If you mean looking human, then you need a bit more than walking to do it. There's plenty of animals out there that walk on two feet that I ain't calling human. Whenever you confront someone, unless they've already been delving into this and, and, you know, and have uncovered actual archaeological evidence, doesn't matter how big of a scientist they are, they'll, they'll flat deny it. They don't, for whatever reason, want to accept the fact that if mammals can evolve, reptiles can too. Is that even a straw man? It's hard to tell because it's such a dumb fucking sentence. Of course, I believe reptiles can evolve. However, I'm going to have to stop you when you tell me that these super sexy man monster beasts are walking around today. That I have a bit of an issue with. Irregardless of even that point, there is overwhelming archaeological evidence, there's overwhelming uh, te uh, ancient text, there's overwhelming uh, even eyewitness accounts that have seen them today, you know, as recently as just a few years ago. Calling the evidence overwhelming is quite a stretch. However, that being said, irregardless, I look forward to him presenting the archaeological evidence, the historical textual evidence, uh, the anecdotal hearsay, oh, I saw a lizard man walking around. That's not going to do me a whole lot, though. It, you know, for me, it's a no-brainer. But, uh, you know, there are still people that like to get a chuckle at my expense. Oh, and this came for you, Pierre. Hey! <laughs> it's okay for mammals to evolve into a bipedal hominid, but not those damned reptilians. Even though the vast majority of them were already walking on two legs. Velociraptor, Tyrannosaurus rex, Iguanodon, already walking on two legs. How many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? Being bipedal does not make you a hominid. And being a hominid is not a human. Hominid is the great ape family. Reptiles don't evolve into apes. <laughs> You're not even trying to say that. You're saying reptiles evolved into human-like creatures. That's not the same thing as a hominid. That's not the same thing as bipedal. So, how big of a leap then is it for them to evolve into a bipedal hominid? Not much. Everybody fucking jump! That's a very big fucking jump. There's a reason why humans are the only creature, why great apes are the only family to evolve to this level. If it's a, not a big 
fucking jump, a big fucking leap for lizards to do this. By your very definition, we should have lots of hominid, or you actually mean human-like animals here on this planet. We don't because of its exclusivity. That's part of the point. You can't just use that as a line of evidence when it's complete garbage. They are called gods, but they were humanoid beings of a rather reptilian type. The text of Eden that I translated depict clearly and quite frequently the reptilian features of the gods. As is standard for all conspiracy theorists the world over, these guys never provide their sources. I don't know what video he is showing us here, so I can't let you know. However, I can link down below the Forgotten Books of Eden for you to look at yourself. I personally estimate that the gods arrived approximately 300,000 years ago. And this derives from the fact that Homo sapiens arrived shortly after. I say this because throughout the text, genetics and the transformation of the human being are recurrent themes. I have to make the assumption that the text of Eden he's referring to here are the Forgotten Books of Eden, which were translated and published in 1882. So I don't know what he's translating. These things have been in existence for well over 100 years. The two particles that compose the word Eden are E, which means home, and Din, or Tin, which is life. But indeed, they are not alone. Humans are already on Earth. Who are these human beings? All right, so you have an actual archaeologist who just happens to be French um, telling you in no uncertain terms that, you know, the reptilians, a.k.a. the Anunnaki, are legit. That's the best you can do! A 10-second clip from a unsourced quote-unquote documentary with a interview with a quote-unquote archaeologist is all you need for proof that super sexy reptile men existed 300,000 years ago? That's beyond sad. Humans naturally evolved on this planet through adaptation and mutation, which is documented. Um, you know, this, this uh, Darwinian uh, idea of evolution is bullshit. But adaptation and mutation? No, that's legit. Aren't those all the same thing? Uh, the reptilians come, aka the Anunnaki, they come and they, well the reptilians come claiming to be Anunnaki, claiming to be the gods, claiming to be humanity's savior. But in fact, we find out that the Garden of Eden is not a paradise. The Garden of Eden is in fact a slave camp for the reptilians to enslave humankind. First of all, that's a really metal hot take, so kudos to you. Secondly, if these reptilian creatures have the technology and the power to travel the many, many light years to reach us, why do they need to use us as slaves? How, I mean, this is off the top of my head, but then again, so is his shit, right? If you have the power to travel those long distances, you don't have the machines necessary to dig up the dirt? <laughs> it's stupid juxtaposition. To be used for various things, including food, I might add. That seems reasonable. Alright, so... Um, there's there's one misconception that uh, has been dealt with right there. Let's do this. Let's go. Just to remind you, his evidence is an uncredited documentary that claims to be about an apocryphal text that claims that reptilian aliens came to Earth, created the Garden of Eden to enslave humans and eat them. That's the evidence. Man, this is some bullshit! According to the ancient Sumerian writings, the Garden of Eden was a slave camp run by the reptilians. I keep hopping on this issue because it's important. You need to provide citations. I'm not going to dig through every scrap of some ancient Sumerian text to try to find evidence of reptilian gods enslaving and eating people. The very least you can do is give a link or maybe a name of a text or a location in that text that validates your argument. Why do you people never do this?
Hmm. Really makes you think. <laughs>